So we're talking about SSL inspection. Why would we do SSL inspection? What are the risks and how might we set this up? What does this actually look like? Well, let's have a look. So let's just say we have, which we do, a Windows 10 computer sitting down here. It's running Windows 10. It's authenticated against a domain controller because it's part of our domain. Uh, and the internet is up here. This is meant to be a cloud. Here's the internet. And there's a website that we want to go to. It's, uh, I don't know, Google. So Google's over here and our computer would love to just go directly out through the internet to Google, straight through here. But in our organization, we've actually said no. We're gonna put a firewall right here. And we're gonna say that port 80 or port 443 as destinations are actually blocked from going directly out the firewall to Google. We could do that. However, we still want them to go out to the internet. We just want to do some monitoring, maybe some blocking, maybe some caching. So we're going to build a proxy set server. Uh, in our case, it's a squid proxy. Very powerful open source package. So if we want to go out to the internet, we can. We just have to go through the proxy. It's going to do a bit of policing, maybe say which websites we can and can't go to. Uh, it could cache it so that if there's lots of people trying to go to the same website, why not just store a local copy of the website and save on bandwidth. We could do that. What we're also going to do is we're going to feed all of the logs from this proxy server into Splunk. This is just an easy way for us to visualize and uh, search through the log files. So all of the logs here are coming into Splunk. This is fine. This will work. Our computer is going to authenticate against the proxy with because the proxy server is also integrated with the domain. So if we're Fred Freddington, the proxy will just ask us for Fred Freddington's username and password, check with the domain controller, uh, maybe ask the domain controller, hey, is this user allowed to go out to the internet? Is this user allowed to go to Google? And based on the user groups and the security groups, and maybe it will come back and say, yeah, sure, that's fine. So we have our PC here and our web server over here and our computer's going to negotiate a secure encrypted channel between the web browser over here and Google's web server, and that's fine. And we often think about this as end-to-end -end encryption because the connection is encrypted all the way from the web browser to the web server, which is fine. There are a few issues with that theory though, because the web server may have a proxy of its own, a reverse proxy. And it may be in intercepting all of the traffic coming from our computer, peering inside of it to make, to make sure we're not trying to attack the underlying Google web server. It probably is doing that, right? So we already understand that our traffic is probably being inspected before it makes it to Google. But we can actually do the same in here. So say as a security administrator, we want to actually see what are our users doing on the internet? We can already have a look at the DNS requests and probably find out a little bit there. But that only gives us a little bit of the information. Let's demonstrate this. We'll jump into our lab. And there's my green screen, but let's have a look at... This is our Windows 10 computer, the one we were just looking at before. Now this is actually set up to use our Squid Proxy which lives at that IP address there. And we're going to go to Google, we're gonna download a video file, just as an example. This is a, just a, a royalty free video that I found online, put it on a Google Drive. It's about, uh, about 256 megabytes in file size. That'll just take a few seconds to download. Let's also do something else. Let's now send something to the internet. So send something to Pastebin, for example. So maybe we're a, an insider threat. We're trusted by our domain. We're probably seen as a trustworthy employee, 
but we want to go rogue. We're going to upload the secret recipe to the internet. So we're going to steal some trade secrets here. So maybe we go to pastebin and we say, here is the secret recipe. Don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Here is the secret recipe. And then whatever the secret recipe is. Come down here, we'll just give it a name. Secret recipe. Create new paste. And we can see there's a new link that's been generated with our secret recipe. Anyone who goes there will be greeted with the recipe, I guess, right? Now, as it stands, we can't actually really see what the user was doing on Pastebin. Let's have a look at what that looks like if we just jump into Splunk. So we can see here that there is a connection out to Splunk, uh, out to Pastebin, sorry. We can see that user was Fred Freddington, that's correct, it's Pastebin, but all we can see is the connect HTTP method. We can't see what type of content it was. We can't see uh, anything about the referrer or anything like that because all of these HTTP headers are actually only decrypted at Pastebin's web server. So it can digest that information and do what it needs to do. So as a security administrator, we don't really know what our user might be doing on the internet. We can see they went to Pastebin. We can see there were some bytes going in and out, but that doesn't really prove anything and we can't actually be sure that Fred Freddington actually sent anything to Pastebin. Let's have a look at another example. How about the video that Fred Freddington downloaded? Again, we can see that Fred Freddington did go to Google. Looks like they downloaded something. 257 megabytes came in, but we can't actually be sure that Fred Freddington downloaded anything or maybe they're just watching a video or something like that. And this is because we don't actually have any visibility into that SSL connection between our user's web browser, which is Firefox, and the web server, which is Google or Pastebin. Well, let's go ahead and turn on SSL inspection. So we just need to edit the config file here. And I couldn't have done this without a very good guide by CyberSaiyan. I'll put a link to his guide on getting SSL inspection working in the comments. Essentially what's happening here is we've just enabled SSL inspection, SSL bump. And it's going to generate dynamic certificates for each site that we could try and go to. It's going to, and I'll browser trust this uh, explicitly because we've told it to. Uh, so let's now save that. I'm going to stop squid and then turn that proxy back on. Let's have a look. So back in our lab. I'll delete the video from here. Let's refresh this. Control it. Refresh. So, I don't know how easy this is to see. I can't really zoom in this part, but it says here connection is secure, right? Because it is going, it is a an SSL connection. But it says here connection verified by a certificate issuer that is not recognized by Mozilla. So Mozilla package with their browser a whole list of root certif uh, certificate authorities which your browser inherently trusts because they're really well known like VeriSign and DigiTrust and, or DigiCert. Uh, this is one that, I mean, it it's valid. Our browser trusts it, but Mozilla doesn't really know. So it's just giving us a warning here. But I mean, other than that, it just looks like it's fine with it. You know, there's no warnings coming up on our browser. Uh, no issues at all there. Now, if we go in and inspect this, we can actually have a look. Verified by Cyber Saiyan, which is uh, basically just one that we minted ourselves. This could have been pushed out by an administrator, for example, uh, and it's all happy. And it's, you know, it's fine for google.com. Anything, you know, all subdomains, this is fine. Uh, so check out Cyber Saiyan as well. Really good security researcher who, uh, who came up with the guide for this because it's not really easy to set this up. 
So let's go ahead now and download this video again. Download anyway, okay. So we'll download this video. And we're gonna do, we're gonna use pastebin again. And we'll say, a new paste, here is the other half of the secret recipe. And here it is. So the secret sauce, uh, let's just make sure this is, yep, so this is also uh, recognized that it's using a different certificate, not the paste bin, whatever paste bin have. Okay, we'll come down here and we'll close one, let's call it part two. So let's have a look at what the log files look like now. So now we can see that the logs are telling a little bit of a different story. We can see the HTTP method, the true HTTP get request. We can see that a video file, this is the MIME type, was downloaded. You can see here that SSL inspection tells a little bit of a different story, a bit more context there. Let's have a look now with Pastebin. Remember that uh, we uploaded the secret recipe to pastebin.com. Let's have a look. So here we go. There is now a post request. There, are, there is 991 bytes going outbound. Here's the referrer. Because this is just how Pastebin works, it gives you the referrer in the post request that you make as it's generating the this actual URL here. So let's go in and have a look at what that is. And so if we're in the middle of the traffic, we can actually potentially even see that someone's gone onto Pastebin and uploaded the secret recipe. Uh, now, I wanna be clear, we didn't actually get the payload. That is, we didn't actually intercept this part just using the squid proxy. We only got the HTTP headers. If you wanted to actually be able to reconstruct the payload, you'd need to do some packet capturing some other way. The squid proxy is only kind of intercepting that and getting uh, logs for the headers or just the metadata. So there's a very brief example of SSL inspection in action. And there's a little bit that goes into setting this up, but once you do, it is very robust and really effective as well. Now, we probably need to talk about some of the consequences about doing this. This is fundamentally breaking encryption. This is a man in the middle attack on our own users. And as a user, you should always assume that everything you do on your work computer, on your work network is monitored, and you probably shouldn't do anything you wouldn't want your employer to find out about. If you are a security administrator or a CISO of a company, you should ask a few questions about doing this around privacy laws in whatever region you're in to make sure, uh, or maybe you just need to let your users know that you're doing an SSL inspection. Now, Will Dorman of the Carnegie Mellon University of Pennsylvania wrote a really good post back in 2015 called The Risks of SSL Inspection. Will makes a very good point about how we usually confuse SSL and TLS for always being end-to-end -end encryption, which is not always the case. Uh, in this example and in many others where you are inspecting the traffic, it just becomes point-to-point -point encryption and any point along the way that's decrypting it is compromising our privacy and our security. So that is something you should be thinking about. Uh, and off the back of this blog post, which I'll put a link to in the description, I actually found a little bit of, I suppose, a glitch or a bug. Now this might just be in my configuration of the Squid Proxy, but at SSL.com, you can go to an example of a revoked SSL certificate. And if I go there, I should be getting a browser warning because this is a revoked certificate. We can have a look. Uh, again, it says it's signed by Cyber Saiyan, uh, but this is obviously the certificate that we're intercepting the connection with. If I now go and turn off the proxy settings and go back to the same page. Now it's actually coming up to let me know that this is a revoked certificate. So with the proxy on, and this might just be my configuration, uh, I'm actually not being advised because as far as my browser is concerned, up to the point of the proxy, this 
website has a valid certificate. So there you have it. There is an example of SSL inspection and why you might have this set up in an environment. Now, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video which explains the entire setup that's configuring and building the proxy server, the LDAP authentication, the SSL inspection, and maybe we can have a look at that in another video. Well, that's gonna do it for now. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.